Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sessa here, bringing us a Photoshop tutorial, bringing us a cool little vintage header design tutorial today. Um, pretty much I I really, really, really like the style that's coming out with this. Uh, it looks very, very nice. You probably saw the end result of this video in the beginning like I usually do. So if you guys like that kind of stuff, you'll learn that right here, right now, and it's very, very easy. I think this looks very, like... It looks very, it looks so clean, it's kind of unbelievable. So I'm um, pretty much going to show you how to do that today, and all I really need today it, to get started at all is like maybe like some kind of like picture. I went ahead and just typed in Google, by the way, did you guys see the new go, uh, the Google like logo? Like I don't know if you saw, but if you type in like, you know, the obvious differences, like there's like, it looks more like an aerial font. I don't know if I like it, to be honest. Anyway, um, so pretty much just typed in mountains in Google, I just found a nice little picture. Uh, that's just a very nice little landscape picture, maybe like a landscape picture or a city line picture or any like nice picture that like maybe catches people's eye would be a very, very good uh, addition to this banner design. Um, so pretty much I have that here. I have that ready to go. So that's all I'm going to really need and like a, you know, prep prehand, you know, beforehand kind of thing. So pretty much don't forget guys, 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below and let's get started right away. So pretty much I just told you we already have this mountain picture. We'll use that in a second. But right before we do that, we need to change this uh, white. I think it's already offset white. But yeah, if it's white, you want to change this background code to offset white. We'll just around where I have here, this E4, E4, E4 hex code. So pretty much I'm press OK. And then to quick fill this hex code in, since it's already, already there. But if you want to quick fill it for your foreground color, to quick fill your, uh, your foreground color, just pressing Alt Backspace on the layer. And then you should have a, a nice offset uh, white background to start off with because we're going to need uh, for this kind of like you know style you really need to prep it before you actually go for anything like really really nice or something like that so pretty much with this new picture that I have here I'm going to change this uh, layer style from normal to luminancy the last one here I'm going to change my opacity from 100 to maybe about 15 yeah we'll say 15 so pretty much we have this here looks all cool it's just like a nice little you know I'm starting up my backing I'm making sure I understand we're going to go with this. I'm going to make sure I do this picture here. And as well as I'm going to use another new layer. So above this picture, I'm going to change my foreground color from offset white to white now. It should be white for your foreground color. And I'm going to press B on my keyboard. And I'm going to bring up the brush tool. I'm going to use this soft brush. I want you to have this brush as default. And pretty much I'm just going to go ahead and just click and drag just like so. Just like a little, maybe like a little half circle thing here. And then one good time, and it should look pretty good. So once you do this, you want to change your over, uh, your opacity from about 100 to maybe 60 or so. Uh, you might have to change that, though, depending on the color you use in the future of the video. I'll show you guys what I talk about, uh, just in case it looks weird. I'll show you how to fix that. Um, so all you got to do is really that, just put in a little highlight there. And then, again, we're going to change our foreground color to maybe a gray. And you guys saw me do this before, actually, I think so. So once you just take this gray, you want to click like like once or three, maybe like three times, maybe four times, just like so, like a little like a like up, down, up, down, up, down kind of pattern thing. You get to see what I did there. And I just, I'm just trying to make my offset white background look a lot better than just having a plain white background. I don't want it to look, you know, plain. I want it to look really nice. And as well, if I have these highlights here, when I use brightness and contrast, which I'm going to do right now in the adjustments tab, it will look a lot better when you actually put the multiply or not multiply i think it's color burn color excuse me color overlays on the white offset background so that looks pretty good right now um yeah we'll just change this from negative we'll change the brightness to negative 35 and the contrast to 60 just so we can keep it all nice and clean for the video settings um so yeah pretty much that's what i got i'm gonna do that right now and that's pretty much done with the you know the start of the background which looks very cool looks very nice so far right so pretty much now we're gonna make another new layer and I have these rulers set up I just used uh, control R to bring up these rulers right here and I just basically snapped to the middle it would snap every single time you you can see it snaps where uh, the ruler is in that middle and if you do it the uh, up down vertical way or horizontal uh, you get snaps in there too so I just did that really quickly just so I can see what I have going on here but anyways I'm gonna take the rectangle marquee tool which is M your keyboard for the shortcut and it's this one right here rectangle marquee tool and we're gonna just basically click and drag and we're gonna go ahead and do something maybe about right here I think that looks pretty good so I have this color already set here that I really want to use um, red. I just like to use red a lot of time. Like, I don't know. My favorite color to work with is like an orange. Red counts as orange, kind of, in a way. Um, for like designing, just for design purposes. But basically, when you want to choose your color, you want to choose like a very dark color. You want to choose a color that's, you know, not too vibrant. You want to choose a color like in this kind of vicinity. So if you're going to choose any color, do it like around here and then pretty much play around like around this area. Because when you, when you, when you want to, uh, put this on actually the blend mode that you need, it needs to be some kind of darker color. So, 
pretty much already have this color selected here in the background. So the background uh, quick fill shortcut is uh, control backspace. And there we go. You see the color is now there. I'm going to control D to deselect. And I'm also going to hide my rulers with control H. And now that I have this red uh, rectangle like box here, I can just change this from normal to color burn. What you can see here looks very, very nice, and uh, it, it'll look better in a second. But what I was talking to you before, uh, before, and if you have like those the white highlights we did in the beginning, if you have it too far up, it would look like this. So to fix that, you would have to lower the opacity. That's why I said to use it at about 60 or so. Uh, so I can probably put it at rate like 51. That looks pretty good. So 50 just for uh, you know clean measures. Um, pretty much th that's how you fix that very awkward look to that. So that's I just want to make sure you guys know that. So pretty much now. I have this here. I'm going to change the opacity and move it to about 80 or so. I wanted to make it look clean. That looks really, really nice. Uh, you guys are seeing where this is kind of going maybe uh, right about now. So pretty much I'm going to duplicate this layer. So I'm going to hold Alt and Shift. I'm going to move it over. And I'm going to pretty much just try and cut this out right here just because I want to do something a little different. We're going to press Delete. I'm going to just move it so it ends right there. There we go. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to lower the opacity down though to I'll say around there yeah 35 looking good looking good looks pretty good right now so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna make another new layer so right now I have this color already set I'm, I'm just, just setting up some kind of stuff right here and by the way this is completely like base like you know model type thing you can do whatever you want I'm just showing you what happens when you layer colors with basically like an offset white background with color burn so pretty much I'm gonna make a new layer like I was gonna say and I'm just gonna put a nice little highlight on the top so I'm just pretty much going to use a white brush, a nice soft white brush. Click one time at the top, just like so. Lower the opacity down just a little bit. And then pretty much I'm going to use brightness and contrast again. And I'm just going to make this look a little bit better with just putting up my contrast a bit, maybe to about 45 or 35, excuse me. And then lowering my brightness down to maybe negative maybe 15 or so. I think that looks pretty good. So we're, I would, what I basically did was just, I kind of like, I, th I love the way it looks when it's more darker tones. So that's why I like to do with brightness and contrast a lot. I love to work with that. Um, so I, I don't really mind doing it more than once in like one layer. You know, it's whatever. It looks really good the way it looks right now. I really do like this. So pretty much now, it's just all like kind of where you want to go with it. So if I was going to do anything, I'd probably just use like a text, right? I'm just going to type in vintage. Why not? Uh, with a nice little text. That's the okay font for the word vintage, I guess. Maybe like that. Looks better. Um, so pretty much I'm going to make this, uh, actually, if you know how to bring this uh, table up, by the way, it's your character's table. If you just click and basically highlight everything, if you press Control-A, it does the same thing if you highlight it. Um, and pretty much you press Control-T, and it brings up this box right here. So pretty much you can see this VA. This will split the letters, like split the uh, spacing between the letters, and I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to put this a bit higher. That way the V and the I is pretty far away from each other. So I'm going to do something like that. That looks kind of the way I want it. We'll move it over here. I'm not going to work too much on it. I'm going to change this color, though, to a gray and just leave that V as white. There we go. Pretty good, pretty good. All right. So what I'm going to do right just really quickly, you can do the same thing in your you know thing, but whatever. I'm just going to show you guys something cool I can do right now. I'm going to make another new layer. I'm going to make the new layer above or, excuse me, below the text layer. And I'm going to go ahead and just use a rectangle market tool again, which is the M on your keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to use uh, Alt Back to quick fill the white in just really quickly. And then pretty much I'm going to put this uh, little box on overlay over the red. It looks really, really cool when I do this. Um, we'll actually lower the fill in, the fill down, excuse me. So maybe I'll lower the fill to about 40%. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to, you know, explain this too much. But what I really did it was just put a box over this little area below the text. So it makes like the V is like popping out a little bit more, like the dominant letter of maybe like your name or something. You, I don't know, it looks pretty cool or whatever. Um, so pretty much I'm just going to double click on this. I'll put a stroke on it. Why not? A nice white stroke with one pixel size. Put it on overlay. That looks pretty good when I lower the opacity down a little bit. There we go. That's the idea that I had in my head. Uh, I think it looks pretty dang cool. You can see what I'm trying to go with right now. Um, anything else you really want to do is really up to you. I mean, like, I don't know. What do I want to type in? Like, we'll just type in tutorial banner. Boom. Drop this spacing down. Uh, boom, lowered it again. So anything you really do after this is really up to you. Like I said just now, uh, I'm gonna actually make another layer and put another uh, like leak light. I just I don't know what I call it. I don't know what is there a term for this? What I'm doing? I'm just literally putting a soft brush on the top. I love the way it looks. I'm gonna do that one more time, just like so. 
Load the opacity again. Looks pretty good. And now I also have these brushes also. My brush pack, actually. That the new update came with these cool little brushes here that kind of work for this kind of style here. Uh, you can just go ahead and use, use one. Why not? And of course, I'll actually put the brush pack in the description down below. It's for $5. And basically, I always update this brush pack. It's kind of my like my go-to brush pack. You can see it. It's actually right here. This is the brush pack right here, right now. You can see all the stuff that's in it. And it has some pretty cool ones. And, you know, just so you know, boom. I'm just going to put that around here just like so. And actually, if you want to get some cool little highlights, you can use really any brush for this. But if you want to get any cool little highlights, and if you have like a very nice, small, like maybe a square brush like this, and you want to click around, you can try to use something in my 40K brush pack just in case. And also, you want to go to Filter, Blur, Motion Blur. Maybe just use, yeah, oh, that's pretty good right here. Uh, I'll probably just put this up a little bit more. Maybe at 190 distance with motion blur, maybe the angle at 45 or so. Press OK. And if I just put this on overlay, it looks pretty dang cool. And it gives a nice little look to it, a nice little uh, like lighting look. So pretty much anything you do after this is freaking awesome. If, like, if I just get rid of this, you can see that this looks actually pretty cool by itself. Maybe if I put the opacity up, right? You can see, oh, what? A, boom. Look at that. That's like really, really nice looking, actually. Um, so really, you can do anything with this kind of style. It's just a very simple thing to do. And it's just, you know, sometimes it's the most simple things that look so, so gosh darn good. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like, guys. I said it before, 200 likes on the video equals a second down below. So don't forget to leave a like, all that cool stuff. Maybe check out the brush pack. It's for $5, like I said before, on my selfie.com, so it's HQ store. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at HQ. Siso HQ out. Peace.